This is the Mississippi Outdoors Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Wyatt. Today we're talking with someone who is the most highly recruited football player in Mississippi State football history. He's the second most highly recruited player in the state of Mississippi ever. Delwan Robinson on today's show. This episode of the Mississippi Outdoors podcast is brought to you by the Foundation for Mississippi Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. You're listening to the Mississippi Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Matt Wyatt. And today, we have a big guest. I mean, literally (laughs) a big guest. He is former Mississippi State defensive lineman, former NFL defensive lineman, Delwan Robinson, and uh, just really appreciate you coming down and giving me some time, Delwan. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And judging by your social media, which I follow you, <laughs> I have either interrupted a fishing trip or some type of hunting trip to get you down here because that's pretty much what you're doing most of the time. Am I right? <laughs> uh, I try to. I try my best to stay in the woods as uh, much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get into that. Now, football obviously has you know been a Huge part of your life. Take me back to your childhood of what it was like and when you decided or when you knew football was going to be something that was going to take you a long way. Well, it started when I, uh, I'm the youngest out of four boys. Okay. And uh, all of my older, uh, older brothers uh, played uh, football and uh, all but one. But um, from being the runt to the biggest brother, uh, I actually had no choice. Uh, my older brothers was pretty good athletes, and so I always had um, a chip on my shoulder to try to be a better or just as good football player players uh, as they were. Now, you grew up in DeSoto County? Yep, Hernando, Mississippi. Went to high school at Hernando? Yeah, Hernando, yep. And when did the recruiting begin to happen? How early for you was that? Uh, probably my sophomore year. Um I had I was fortunate to play varsity as a ninth grader. Uh, I was a little bigger than everybody else, and uh, I was able to move a little bit uh, to run f- uh, for a big guy. And um, and I and I played defense, and I played standing up as a as a Mike backer. And I just used to uh, love to run and hit people. You played linebacker. Yep. So what did you weigh in high school playing linebacker? Well, uh, on the paper it said two fifty. <laughs> Uh, you know that give or take though, but uh, <laughs> I averaged about two uh, about two fifty to two seventy uh, between my junior and uh, senior year. Okay, your your recruiting experience, like what kicked it off? Who was the coach that reached out to you first? Well, the first coach uh, from the spring, uh, I got the first phone call. I believe would I believe it was uh, Coach Cutcliffe. Okay. Um, uh, my grandmother, I uh, stayed with my grandmother. Uh, she she uh, was tempted to get a second line because the phone was always ringing <laughs> off the hook. Uh, somebody called in trying to uh, to, to uh, recruit. Yeah. But I believe it was Coach uh, Cutcliffe at Ole Miss. It was the first to reach out. Yep. When did Coach Cheryl and the guys at Mississippi State, which is where you went, wound up going, when did they begin to reach out to you? Well, uh, I had a, a couple older guys from uh, Hernando uh, was on the roster at Mississippi State. So the interest, the interest was always there, and I um, and you know like that. We're doing your era. Uh, I became a Bulldog fan, so I was always a low key a Bulldog fan. So when they started recruiting, uh, they didn't have to put much effort in it. Uh, but uh, probably like my uh, uh, my late sophomore, uh, early junior year is when uh, they uh, showed a lot of interest. Okay, you wound up signing with State. We know that. Um, and, and at that time, when you were being recruited, you were the highest rated recruit ever in the history of Mississippi high school football and were for a long time overall. Mm-hmm. You still are the highest rated recruit to ever sign with Mississippi State. So so my thing, my thought would be that you mentioned the phone ringing off the hook. <laughs> How many options did you have on the table and what were you actually considering? Well, uh, Matt, I was very fortunate to 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 be uh, to have those opportunities. Uh, the mail back then, you know, it, it wasn't a social media post or yeah. whatnot. It was, you know, mail. Uh, man, I used to probably get twenty five, thirty letters a day uh, in the in the mailbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I could have went anywhere. 
uh, a lot of schools were eliminated uh, due to uh, where they were. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, I uh, got a call from USC, and I had no clue where USC was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but if you was in the uh, Southeast, uh, in the SEC, you, you was going to have a chance to to uh, to recruit me. And uh, and I, was, I grew up an SEC fan, mm -hmm. so... Uh, so it basically came down to uh, SEC schools. Okay. Your brothers, you mm -hmm. mentioned them, and you were the youngest of four. Y your three older brothers, did they try to convince you one way or the other? Did they have opinions on what you ought to do? Uh, no. Uh, my oldest brother uh, signed a letter of intent to play at Mary State. And the funniest thing ever, when he he left one Saturday to go to school, my mom uh, you know, packed him up to go to uh, summer camp. And two days later, she had to go back and get him. He said, Mom, I'm sorry. Football <laughs> is not for me. I'm going to go to school and get my education. And I thought it was the end of the world. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he made her a promise. And uh, now he's Dr. Robinson. He has a Ph.D. Wow. He's been an educator for over 20 years now. Uh, so uh, they didn't they they didn't push me one way or the other. They were just happy that I had opportunity to go uh, and play on the next level. Yeah. Played at State. Uh, we know about the career there. You had an All SEC year, um, and you find yourself on an on an NFL roster. First three years in the NFL with the Houston Texans, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you know, every kid dream is to get drafted and uh, play a long time in the National Football League. Uh, but um, I I had a free agent opportunity uh, with the Houston Texans, and uh, I was fortunate, you know, to make that uh, that club. Uh, I tell people all the time it was 16 defensive linemen in the room and they was only keeping eight and four spots were spoken for because, you know, three of them were first rounders and one of them was a high draft pick. So, um, but, uh, you know, my upbringing from Miss in, uh, in Mississippi and uh, going to Mississippi State and being the youngest out of four boys, I liked it my odds. So um, mm -hmm. I just went and did what I know how to do and it just give a lot of effort and um, and just play hard. You know, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but that the lifestyle of being an an NFL football player, you're one of the 53 guys on the Houston Texans roster over a long period of time. You know, I mean, we hear about 10 and 15 year NFL careers, but when you're a, a D lineman or running back, I mean, you play three, four, five years in the NFL. That's a that's a good solid career. What's that lifestyle like? What is it like day to day? It's a grind, and uh, especially if you uh, a guy in my situation, an undrafted guy, uh, it's a grind. So therefore, you you have to always be um, on top of your game. Uh, you know, know your materia, uh, be uh, be flexible, be multiple. Uh, one year, uh, I was the backup nose, backup three technique, the backup five to nine, wherever they wanted me to do, and I even played special teams uh, one year. So um, uh, the more you can do, uh, you know, the longer you can stay around. Uh, you know, you have guys with uh, just uh, just ungodly uh, 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 ability, like mm -hmm. a Jeffrey Simmons or a Fletcher or Chris Jones, and uh, but then you like you got guys that literally fighting every day for a, a roster spot. But that's the great thing about uh, the game; you can compete and uh, have a chance to uh, win a job. Yeah. While you were in the NFL, did you have time to hunt and fish, enjoy the outdoors the way you wanted to? I was a fish out of water, man. Uh, coming from <laughs> Hernando, then going to Starkville, then going to Houston, I, I, I was like, man, it's too many lights. It's, it's too many, you know, eight lane highways. So um, I kind of, you know, had to put my my outdoors or like, you know, just put my things I did growing up on hold because I, I never had got, had opportunity to do it because. During the off season, you know, we, we'll get back. Hunt season almost over, and you only got a short time. So, but so you know, during that time, didn't have a lot of opportunities to uh, to do the things I love uh, growing up. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that's pretty tough on you. Somebody that loves to spend time in the woods and on the water the way you do, I would imagine that's pretty tough. It's pretty tough, but uh, again, that comes along with being a professional athlete. You know, you have to prioritize, mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, set goals and uh, sacrifices. Uh, you know, you know, some some guys are, you know, they can't, 
you know, they, they don't know how to uh, prioritize or put things in perspective to uh, achieve that, uh, you know, their goals or that career to make it last or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You got done with uh, your football career playing. You got into coaching. Now you're a full-time employee of Parks and Recreation there, City of South Haven. Correct. One of the athletic directors at uh, Parks and Rec in South Haven. And now you do have time. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> man, uh, what I do now, I work with kids every day. Uh, I, I get times on the weekend and things of that nature to hunt and fish. Uh, my daughters, they they have – uh, started to grow to like the outdoors so that's the incentive also but yeah now uh whenever i get a chance i'm uh I, i'm dropping the tailgate or uh, i'm trying to find a fishing uh, rod and reel yeah yep and you know uh on the job they mess with me because i'm over the fishing rodeo and uh and i like hey i want i i got the fishing rodeo this year like hey let me uh <laughs> let me be in charge of it so yeah <laughs> that's great um uh, I've seen with you everything from deer hunting to rabbit hunting, a little bit of everything. Like, what's on your list from a hunting standpoint? What's on your list of things you enjoy the most? I started out, uh, you know, I was I was a late bloomer. I was uh, uh, quite naturally into hunting because of football or whatnot. Right. I uh, started out, my first love was deer hunting. And then the guys that lived down the road from me, they was big squirrel hunters, and they had mountain curs. I got into squirrel hunting and uh, coon hunting. I got uh, mountain curs. And then I got introduced to rabbit hunting, and that changed everything. Uh, rabbit hunting is um, on the top of my list. Uh, you don't have to be quiet. You can go uh, and shoot the breeze, the camaraderie uh, that you can go and just joke and laugh and listen to the dogs work. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's uh it's very very enjoyable. Now, do you raise beagles? Do you have your own? Uh, I do. Uh, this this is my second year of owning my own uh, pack of dogs. I have a kennel partner, uh, Chadrick Davis. Uh, you know, uh, with Triple C kennels, we joke all the time because I didn't have dogs at first, and these two older guys introduced. Well, they didn't. In, they introduced me, but introduced me like, "Hey, you want to go with us?" They was they was very nice. To let me start hunting with the with them, uh, Elroy and uh, Ed, and um, it's hard to get in a, in a in a circle of guys to let you go hunting with you or let you you know fish with them. Yeah. But they was nice enough to let me uh, hunt with them. And now, man, we have a ball, and you know I'm venturing out on my own now. Have my own dogs uh, and things of that nature. Like I, I hunt with my buddy a lot. Uh, you know, we we uh, hunt together, kennel partners, and we have a good time, man. Yeah, H- how do you find places to hunt? Is it private land? Do you have places you uh, go? You know, actually, we have a lot of success on public land in Mississippi yeah. uh, with the National uh, Wildlife Refuge yeah. and, uh, and a lot of government land. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, uh, people are very nice uh, to let us uh, hunt their place also. I have a good buddy from high school, man. We, we go over to his house. His name is Joe. And we get our dogs tuned up at his place before we go to uh, one of the, you know, the uh, wildlife refuges or uh, or we get invited to a hunt club in the Delta or something. So we get our dogs tuned up with him before we like it's like preseason. You know, we'll get them tuned up and get them ready to roll because late in uh, December, you know, deer season is winding down. Then when January rolled around, you know, guys start inviting us. And but when February kick off, it's playoff time. You know, they need to be in tick tock shape. And they need to be ready to, uh, you know, run all day long. Yeah. yeah, like a preseason game. I ain't no doubt. So, so when you say tune, kind of tune up the dogs, mm-hmm. it's basically a place where you know they can jump a rabbit. Correct. And then sort of work and and kind of work on, I guess, the skill or kind of get back into shape. Well, get them in shape. You know, uh, during the summer months, it's really too hot to run. You yeah. know, it may run at night or run early in the morning. Uh, but when the weather starts cooling off, you start getting them out, getting them acclimated, yeah. uh, and you know, getting them back in shape. Uh, and then when that first frost roll around, we get two or three frosts. It's time to roll. Then it's time to you know keep them in the woods as much as we can. And it's just like you know any athlete training. The more you keep them in the woods and things of that nature, uh, you know they'll be ready to roll. Yeah. So, How about that? Yep. We had a pretty good year this year. Uh, we we harvest a lot of rabbits and dogs. Uh, they did outstanding, man. Uh, 
a good pack of dogs will make a hunt very easy. But, you know, we can kill one rabbit or we can kill, you know, a tailgate fool. It's really about the dog work. And uh, that's, you know, one of the biggest enjoyment, you know, to see a pup, you know, raise a pup or you see a dog finally get it or whatnot. You know, we get a lot of enjoyment out of that also. Um, my dad, my uncles, they grew up rabbit hunting. They had beagles. We had some for a short period of time when I was in high school, but I was so involved with sports and playing three sports. I didn't really, I was dedicated to that really at the time. But what I remember is how they would talk these guys who were experienced in that sport and raising dogs and, and running uh, rabbits with beagles, how they would sometimes almost marvel at how it was bred into them, mm-hmm. how, um, it was really about directing that that Beagle's ability and mm-hmm. interest because it came natural to him mm-hmm. to know what to do. Right. You know, um, we have certain dogs that have certain characteristics, and we'll be like, hey, we're going to breed these two dogs. Uh-huh. Hey, you know, if a dog is bigger, uh, you know, like a 15-inch dog or whatnot, uh, or you like certain characteristics of a dog, we'll be like, hey, we're going to breed that dog, you know, and to your liking. Uh, to be able to, uh, you know, to run the style of dog that you like. Some people like fast dogs. Some people like straight line dogs or whatnot. You know, I'm really a pleasure hunter. Uh, you know, I don't really get into the breeding side of it far as papers and things of that nature. You know, that's a whole nother class of rabbit hunter. Yeah. For me, it's, uh, you know, a pleasure pleasure hunting and, and uh, you know, I have seen dogs that what people call backyard bred will go burn a rabbit up, yeah. you know, and you yeah. can harvest a rabbit and, and enjoy the sport. Yeah, that's really neat. So growing up as a kid, did you rabbit hunt then? I, I, I probably went on my first rabbit hunt when I was probably um, maybe – 19 maybe okay and i think we well i shot at a couple rabbits that day but i was like hey i think i can get used to this so i I didn't grow up rabbit hunting uh but now you know like i said that's the top of my uh Uh my list uh so like i said i hunt with some older guys and i hunt with a good buddy of mine chad we we probably hey man go ahead and kill a deer so we can go rabbit hunting you know (laughs) we try to get the deer hunting out the way so we can so we can strictly rabbit hunt and you know he has kids and it's and it's good to see uh, a young hunter learn to rabbit hunt learn to listen uh how what the dogs are doing i have uh former uh college teammates we do a big rabbit hunt every year uh jerry snowwood and david stewart they bring their boys this past year uh we call david big country he brought his boy. I think Boone is 14, and I think he killed four rabbits, and he had a ball. I, bet. I mean, he outshot everybody. Seemed <laughs> like he had a a, a great, uh, you know, kill ratio that day. He had a good – nestle. So we get a lot of enjoyment all that, out of that, you know, just getting young hunters started. But, you know, it, rabbit hunting to me, you can't beat it because you get the – Walk and talk yeah. and laugh. Yeah, I think the the pre the pre hunt and the post hunt is probably the best because you know you're talking about hey what we gonna do what we looking for in the post hunt man you missed that rabbit or that rabbit took your gun it, it, you know things of that nature we have a lot of fun uh, because it's it's almost like a locker room you mm-hmm. know you get to you know uh, who killed what who didn't kill what. Uh, you know, me, yeah. Jarius, and uh, David, we have a competition every year who killed the most, or who, you know, who missed the rabbit or whatnot. Um, I believe, um, I think this year I killed the most, I believe. I'm going to say that anyway, but <laughs> I think Jerry's been the lead man on there. He's a pretty good hunter. I, so. I was going to say, I want, <laughs> would they agree with you that you. Well, this year I know I was I was okay. the top man, okay. but in the past, I think Jarius, uh, I think he uh, came out on top. Uh, He's pretty skillful, you yeah. know what I mean. He, uh, he's, uh, as they say, he's about that life, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been fishing one time with Jarius, <laughs> and that was at an event, probably fifteen to twenty years ago. Yeah, but yeah, he caught the most in the boat that day. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a competitor. In he it, like, is competitive. Uh, the funniest story ever. One year, and uh, we was in fall camp or something. I think we had a bye week. I think both season had just came in. Uh, we went to Big E place to hunt. Yeah. I was gonna be his cameraman, and uh, I really didn't know how to work the camera. But he said, "Hey, look, man, just flip it out. Hey, put record." We saw it out there. We really didn't see anything. Then right at dark, some does come out. He said, "Hey, hey, I'm gonna take that one right there." I said, "Hey, I got it, brother. Hey, look, you know, I had the camera rolling. It was right at dark, and I, I was like, I can barely see, but I can see." 
He killed a deer, and I didn't. I, the lens cap was on. <laughs> So we got in the locker room the next day. We go to the team <laughs> meeting, and uh, we was going to show everybody. But I had the lens cap on, but you could hear all the audio. You could hear it. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, Coach Has he Cooper, ever forgiven you for that? Yeah, well, he gave, they gave, well, he gave me a hard time, but they really gave me a hard time in the meeting room the next day. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I bet. Now, and, and your rabbit hunt this year, you had Coach David Turner. Yep. Uh, Coach Turner, man, he's been inboxing me for the last several years of trying to get on the hunt. I said, hey, Coach, every weekend we're hunting, so you just let me know. And he was finally able to catch up with us. And so he grew up rabbit hunting. And so once the hunt started, you know, he started mimicking things that he did growing up. And I was like, Coach, you 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 hunted before. He was like, man, I tell you, Dale Warren, that's all we did was rabbit hunt. And Coach had a great time. Uh, you know, we was able to kill a lot of rabbits that day. I think we uh I think we harvested 24 rabbits that day. Uh, Mr. Dunner, who he he was uh, very nice to let us come hunt his place. And, and, and that plays a lot when you go to a place with good rabbit habitat to kill rabbits. But I think Coach wound up killing four rabbits that day. But on the flip side, though, he he was a little broke down after the hunt because we did a lot of walking. And so, you know, <laughs> it's some good cardio mm -hmm. and it's some rough terrain at times. So, uh, But it's it's uh, all uh, worth it in the end, you know? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. So now, warmer months, and we're about to hit summertime, then what do you do? This is the toughest uh, time of the year for, uh, you know, for houndsmen. To 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 get that dog or keep that dog in not only in shape but to keep him alive right. with, the, with the brutal temperatures and uh, you know you know this is a tough time for houndsmen you know to keep to keep the dogs healthy and uh, keep them uh, you know to keep them uh, going yeah so you switch to fishing I've seen some pictures of some coolers full of crappie well. Um, <laughs> I can fish. Uh, I don't. That's not my first love, yeah. but I can fish. I got a good buddy, the head coach at uh, East Central uh, Junior College, the football coach. I actually taught him how to crappie fish, and now he's a better fisherman than me, <laughs> and he liked to rub my nose in it. So every once in a while, you know, uh, he'll send me a stringer full or a cooler full, and I got to get off the couch, and now I got to go show him I still got it, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I'm an okay fisherman. Uh, you know, like I say, I really uh, mainly crappie fish or uh, brim fish, so say. Uh, but my girls, they are enjoying it now. So I like to, you know, Go find a bed and just let them have at it, you know, and catch some uh, nice brim. But uh, yeah, I will fish, but uh, I, I don't, I don't, I can't brag about fishing though. I get lucky when I fish. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting to think about sort of, you know, the overall scope of your life, you know, growing up with those brothers and y'all all play ball. But am I right? It sounds like the the out the love for the outdoors for you kind of came along later in life. Well, I'll tell you how that how that came about. So my mom, she, she got us a gaming system, uh, Atari or Nintendo or something. So if we play past the stick. You know, if you win, you stay on the stick. Okay. Well, me being the youngest, I don't think my motor skills and hand-eye coordination was where my brothers was. So I never stayed on the game long enough. So I would be on the sideline. I'm like, man, I'm going outside. I'm going outside. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's how uh, my love for the outdoors came about. Uh, because I wasn't good at gaming. And, you know, so I was going outside. Like, I know I can do something out there and just, yeah. just watching them. But, yeah, so that's how I got into really, you know, out of my other brothers. Now, I had two other – one, two of my brothers, they used to go with me because my mom, hey, he don't need to be by himself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know um, – so my oldest brother, he would go but not go, hey, man, look, I'm going to be right here. You come on back. Be safe. Now, uh, one, uh, one, I have two brothers that have passed away. So one brother that was nesting the age to him, he used to go with me. He used to do a little hunting, but he wasn't in it, though. He was going just to say, all right, mama told me to go with you, so I got to go. So, yeah. <laughs> to keep you company. <laughs> Ain't no doubt. How about that? <laughs> um, so in college, you obviously had teammates mm -hmm. who enjoyed hunting, fishing, you know, particularly – uh, w you know, when the off season would allow for it, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned some of those guys you keep up with now, Jerry S and David yep. Stewart. Were you guys spending time in the outdoors together in college? Yeah, uh, me and Jerry's went fishing several times, and then just to hear David's story about hunting, I, I think those two guys are, man, 
I like to hunt. I love to hunt. But they take it to another level. Uh, you know, David is a, you know, they turkey hunt, duck hunt. They 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 are the real deal. Yeah. You know, I just like to let them know that, hey, I can do it too. <laughs> but now uh, <laughs> country and, and, and Jerry's, they take it to another level. Yeah. They the real deal. But me and Jerry's, we went fishing several times. And um, I would like to add to that, you know, I'm up on him and fishing also. So, hey. <laughs> so, Jerry's, if you're listening, watching, <laughs> the bar has been set. He's up on you, you know, challenge is issued, and, and we'll see if he can catch you. And I'm sure he will if he hears this. He'll want to. Well, he'll send me a clip. You know, we, we have a group text, uh, me, him, and David, and, and we're always sending a picture of the game or the harvest we kill or whatnot. And uh, But I think David got both of us when it comes to hunting, though. Yeah. He's, uh, he's legit. <laughs> I guess the deal is, too, like, you know, athletes – that that kind of drives themselves to a certain level of competition. Mm -hmm. One of the things, yes, athletic ability, God-given size and those, but uh, there's a competitiveness there that drives you as well that's kind of unusual. Not just everybody has that mm -hmm. level of competitiveness. And so it just it doesn't really go away, though, does it? Uh, it, it, it don't. Uh, I mean, man, one year we was hunting, uh, and I was hunting with my crew from uh, from home, and I think everybody had killed like three rabbits apiece, and I was not on the board. We wind up killing fifteen rabbits that day, and I think I wind up killing four late in the fourth quarter. <laughs> but they came out the gate, and um, and you know it takes a special skill to kill a rabbit at a high rate, uh, yes. you know. And you, you know, a lot of guys, you know, say, "Hey, no shot or piercing ears." You know, I just want to get them on the ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Know? Well, so. and anybody who's ever done it, you know, you depending on where you hunt. I mean, mm -hmm. there's times where you're on a little lane or a little road or a little cut where, when the rabbit, if he runs through there, you're not going to have a long time where he's visible. He's like he's there and he's gone. Um, it, it it's not easy. Right, and you touched on that. And, and the dogs tell the story, you know. Uh, you know when they voice how how they're carrying the track. You know, I know when that rabbit is hot when he's hot, hot, or, or you know, if I if I'm going with a younger hunter, hey, get ready, get your gun up, yeah. you know, because like you say, it's going to be a split second, mm -hmm. and that rabbit is he don't want to come in in the open. Right. He want to stay in that thick brush. He want to th stay in those briars. But when you got a good pack of dogs, he has to stay on his feet and he has to move. So uh, you have to be ready. And that's why I, uh, my weapon of choice is a semi-automatic, you know, because I need more than one shot. Uh -huh. uh, so I will say it takes me sometimes three or four. But, hey, I get it done. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you mentioned, you know, getting dogs kind of ready for the season. Do you ever target shoot, skeet shoot? You know, some of the facilities will have actually the clay, that right. will, the rabbit clay. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do any of that? We do. Uh, like I say, my kennel partner, uh, Chad, we uh, he got two teenage boys. And, man, I think one of them is 11 and one of them is 16. But I can promise you they probably 25 or 30 in age, you know, because they are mm -hmm. just so mature. And we uh, we we do a lot of that, too, we, uh, a skeet shoot and things of that nature. Yeah, we, yeah. we do that to try to uh, stay up on a point. It, it's, uh, but nothing can help you when that rabbit is, is wide open. And, it's, and the hardest shot, shot to make it when the rabbit is coming right at you. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, that is the toughest shot to make. Sure. Um. DeSoto County is mm -hmm. home, always has been. Um, beautiful place. Now, obviously, it's growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. you know, residential commercial is just spreading out like crazy, but it is a beautiful part of the state. And, you know, for you, that area, what um, – I guess what I'm trying to ask is when you look at it as home, what has the area and the geography and the place itself also meant to you Somebody who enjoys the outdoors to live there and be there. It's home, uh, man. Minnesota County is, it has been rich in athletic uh, uh, talent. Mm -hmm. uh, just from my high school, um, I'm not even the most uh, decorated player that went to my high school. Um, I played with a guy named Kevin Dockery. Um, 
he won a Super Bowl with the Giants. I played with Nikia Greer mm -hmm. uh, that went to Mississippi State. Um, K.J. Wright, uh, Nicobe Dean. Uh, I can keep going on and on about the, the athletic talent, uh, but the Soda County, you know, it's the top of Mississippi. Uh, you know, uh, I work with the city of South Haven, uh, the mayor of Muscle White. Uh, uh, he did, he has done an outstanding job, uh, with the city development and things of that nature. He was, I give him a hard time. He went to Ole Miss. He was a pitcher for <laughs> Ole Miss back in the day. Um, so, um, Snow and Grove, uh, you know, it's mm -hmm. the best, uh, baseball complex in the South, you know, not Mississippi, but, you know, I would say the South. So, uh, the Soda County is home, man. It's, um, it's a great place, man. And, uh, and it's home for me and I love it. Yeah. Your coaches, okay, you mentioned David Turner. Um, you were recruited by Jackie Sherrill, played mm -hmm. for Sylvester Croom, other position coaches. The coaches that you still keep up with, stay in contact with, hear from every now and then? Yeah, uh, man, uh, I, me and Coach Hendricks, are, uh, we're yeah. very cool. He was the D-line coach at Mississippi State. Uh, Brick Haley coached me. We're very, very cool. I actually uh, did not play for Coach Turner, but when I was – uh, coaching junior college ball, he sent me a kid, and we became real good uh, friends. Uh, me and uh, Coach uh, Kroon, um, you know, back in February, I spoke at a luncheon about him. He was there. Uh, play, uh, played for some good coaches, uh, like my high school coach. Uh, my high school coach, uh, Coach Anthony Jenkins, um, him and my uncle were very good friends. Uh, so I, I've been very uh, fortunate and blessed to play for some good coaches. Play for a uh, riverboat run, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Play for Gary Kubiak. Play with some good coaches, uh, some good men. And uh, but it, it don't get no better than like my high school coach. You know, uh, he 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 literally, you know, helped mold me into the man I am today. I'm a better hunting fisherman than uh, he is. Also, we 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 spar a little bit. We go fishing uh, from time to time hunting. But I'm a better fisherman than hunter <laughs> than him. Also, <laughs> <laughs> take that, coach. <laughs> um, so, uh, final question for me: um, those three levels of football, high school football, college football in the SEC, and playing in the NFL, which one was the most fun, and why? High school, um, because we was playing for the love of the game, and you and, and we was teenagers going to compete, and and I and and. Every class from Hernando, I like to tell them all the time, my group won 12 ball games, you know. So uh, high school was by far the most fun uh, that I ever played football. Mm -hmm. Yep. The most pure, too, probably? I ain't no doubt. I mean, because high school was unbelievable, uh, you know, because – we did things at Hernando uh, that never been done. We had a pretty good group of guys, you know, so I, and I still keep in contact with a lot of those guys. High school football was very, very fun. College football, you met friends for life. You mm -hmm. you build a brotherhood in, in college, you, you, uh, friendships. Then on, on the next level, it's strictly business. You know, I keep in contact with a lot of those guys, but the camaraderie is nothing like college and high school. So I enjoyed high school to, uh, by far the most, and uh, I still have a group of friends from college that I'm very, very close with. And and, and that pro ball just is what it is, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Del Juan, it's a real pleasure to get to talk with you. I appreciate some time here on the Mississippi Outdoors podcast. and. Next time you're playing one of those rabbit hunts, give me a call. I'd like to go see it. Well, we're going to get you in on our annual uh, Bulldog rabbit hunt. We'll make sure we get you the invite in, uh, in, uh, early enough so you can plan accordingly. But uh, also, I need to give my two daughters a shout-out because they made sure that, Dad, will you uh, give us a shout-out? So to, uh, to Corey and Charlotte, I love you girls. <laughs> Hello, Corey. Hello, Charlotte, <laughs> from all of us here at Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks. Hey, so I I'll take you up on that on the rabbit hunt. I can't guarantee you that I'll shoot one, but I promise you this, Jarius, I will, I will remove the lens cap. Well, I promise you I can do that. <laughs> well, see, that's, see, okay, so I'm glad you bring that up. So Jarius and, and, and David played offense, and so this year I had a little backup with Coach Turner, a defensive guy. Yeah. So uh, they need a little help on the outside, <laughs> offensive side of the ball, so they need another, you know, okay. another gun. So, All hey. right. We'll see if we can outnumber you at least. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Del Juan, thank you so much. No doubt. Thanks for having me. That's Del Juan Robinson here on the Mississippi Outdoors Podcast. We appreciate you listening, and we'll see you outdoors. <laughs>